by the power of Grayskull. When he messes, I have the power, it's saying to the kids, you don't have to do what you're told anymore. You can be your own person. I got my first master's toys on my fourth birthday. It was just love at first sight. And suddenly, He-Man became, you know, this billion dollar empire. All these male action figures, they're all so wimpy. Why don't we do a massive fig? And he called this one Tank Head. And he called this one Bullet Head. And he called this one He-Man. He-Man, He-Man. You're He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. When we first heard the name, it was so macho and so male chauvinistic. I said, no, you can never, never, never work. And then my dad's like, wait a minute, this could be a great show. We had like two weeks to do it. I mean, we were just flying. Everyone thought, this is ridiculous. It's never going to be a hit. When they announced they were doing the show, Action for Children's Television was up in arms just because of the title. Editors wrote, please do not portray He-Man uprooting a tree. Small children will be moved to emulate. <laughs> now it's a big deal to play a toy or play a you know, superhero, and but in those days it was potentially damaging to your career. It's one of my favorite roles remains so and always will be. It grew so quickly and we made so many figures and accessories and toys. Through the 86-87 period, it was bigger than Barbie. For a little boy, when you find this character in this world where imagination is, is beyond dream, it's just amazing. <laughs>